All right, guys, welcome back. My name is Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Prodigy 360, and here to explain to you a uh, pedigree chart, okay? So if you watch the previous videos, you should totally understand, okay, what circles mean, represent, and what squares represent in our diagrams, okay? But now what I wanna do is I wanna help you understand how it relates back to genes, okay? So a couple of things that you guys gotta remember when looking at a pedigree chart, okay? Whenever you see a black circle, or a black square, that represents a recessive phenotype, okay? And if you remember phenotype, that is just a fancy word that means physical appearance. Recessive, remember, recessive phenotype means that you need two genes, okay, that are recessive for you to get that physical appearance, okay? And so how do we, become, how do we get a recessive phenotype? Okay, well, you need to be homozygous, recessive. Okay, so what does that mean, all right? That means in class, we talked about being homozygous recessive is we're using these two symbols, okay? The lowercase a, the lowercase c, whatever letter we're using to represent a piece of DNA. Okay, and if you remember, follow me, that um, every letter represents a piece of this, okay? A piece of DNA. So whenever I write down, okay, a letter, remember, we're really talking about a DNA molecule, okay? Now, so, to recap, a black circle or black squares in our pedigree chart, okay, represent individuals that are, that have a recessive phenotype. And the only way you can be, a only way you can have a recessive phenotype is by having a genotype that's homozygous recessive, okay? Got it? So now, what does that look like? Remember, this black circle basically has two genes that are the same, right? They're, that person is homozygous recessive. This person is also a black circle, so we know they're also homozygous recessive, okay? Right there. And these two individuals, this person is also homozygous recessive, okay, so there it is. And this person over here is homozygous recessive, okay, got it? So whenever you see a pedigree chart, the very first thing you gotta remember is, okay, who are the black circles, who are the black squares, and now you're like, yes, I know some information, it's given. I know that every black square or every um, black circle is, has a recessive phenotype, therefore they have to have uh, this genotype, homozygous recessive. Now that you have that information, we can figure out what everybody else is, okay? We can figure out their genotypes, okay? Got it? So let's get into that, all right? So now, okay, what genotypes, okay? Um, if you remember from the last video, circles represent females, okay, squares represent males. So let's just call her right here, mom, and let's call him dad, okay? So now on a test, right, you guys are gonna be asked, what are mom and dad's genotypes, okay? And remember, we talked about three different genotypes. We've already talked about homozygous recessive, but the other two are homozygous dominant, that means that you have two genes that are um, dominant, right? Two pieces of uh, that, that you need only one copy for it to be expressed. And then finally, the third phenotype is heterozygous. Okay, got it? So now, what we need to find out is what is mom and dad, okay? Now remember, mom and dad cannot be Okay, little a, little a, because they're not a black circle and they're not black squares. Got it? So they have to be either homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Okay, remember the symbols for this is big A, big A, and heterozygous is one dominant gene, one recessive gene. Okay, so we have to figure out are they homozygous dominant or are they homozygous recessive or heterozygous, I'm sorry. Okay, so how do we do that? Well. That's where the kids are the key to solving these problems. So if we take a look at mom, let's just give them, K 
okay, um, uh, um, uh, their kids' names, okay? So they actually had one, two, three, four kids, okay? Why? Because they're all connected through this line here, okay? They had four kids, okay? Two girls, let's call this one Lisa, okay? And let's call this one Gabby. And let's call the sons, let's call him Rob and Ben, right? So mom and dad had two boys named mom, Ben and Rob, and two girls, Gabby and Lisa. We know that Gabby, that Lisa, has a recessive phenotype, okay? So now let's give these genes um, some, some, some significance. So let's just say that the dominant gene represents, will give you black hair, okay? And let's just say that the recessive gene gives you blonde hair. So now that we added a trait to our genes, okay, we know that Lisa, because she's homozygous recessive, she's blonde, okay? Now, we also know, because mom and dad are white circles and white squares, we know that mom and dad both have black hair. Okay, we know that because they're not shaded it so we know that that's a given so now what kind of genes does mom and dad have right and so you got to remember they have to have e they either this they're either this or this right because these two give you black hair so but you know that lisa has two genes and we know that mom had to give her one and dad had to give her the other one because if then Lisa would never have been, she could never have blonde hair unless mom and dad both have each a copy to, in, uh, to give to their child, right? And so now we solved the puzzle basically because we know that mom has to have a recessive gene, dad has to have a recessive gene, and we know that they have black hair because they're not a black circle or a black square, so therefore we know that mom and dad have to be, there's no other way, they have to be heterozygous, okay? Because that's the only way that they can have a child, okay, that has blonde hair. If both parents, okay, were heterozygous or homozygous dominant, so let's just imagine they were homozygous dominant, right? So that means they have two genes Okay, that are dominant, okay, both of them. If that was, if you thought that was the answer, okay, then Lisa could have never been born because they have, they don't have genes to pass on to Lisa that would give her blonde hair, right? So that's why it's super important that you always use the kids to figure out what the parents possibly are. And remember, which kids do we have to use? we totally have to use, okay, the, the kid with the recessive phenotype. Remember, recessive phenotype means that um, whenever you see a, a black circle or a shaded in square like that, that means that they have a recessive phenotype. That means that they have to be homozygous recessive. And from that, we can tell, okay, the genotypes of their parents. All right? Hope All right, that guys. Helps. Now. Now we have to talk about the hard part of these problems, okay? This part was easy. Figuring out Lisa, it's easy because you know black circles, black squares always mean that they have a recessive phenotype, therefore they're homozygous recessive. You look at what, what each gene, uh, in every problem I will give you the gene and I'll give you the trait that it would express. And so, you know, you just figure out, okay, the recessive trait in this example is blonde, so therefore Lisa has to be blonde, and she has to have two of these genes because blonde is the recessive phenotype, okay? But now, what about Rob? What about Ben? What about Gabby? The problem with this is, remember, Rob, we know, because they're not a black square, we know that they have black hair. We know that. So does Ben. And so does Gabby, okay? 
And if you can see, it's harder being blonde because you need two coffees. But Rob, Ben, and Gabby, they need, they can, they can, they have black hair. How do we know that? Because they're not shaded in. Let me say that again. We know that because they're not shaded in, they have to have the dominant phenotype. But the problem is, there's two ways you can have the dominant phenotype. They, they can be either homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Now let's explain why that is. If we take a look, remember, for every trait, we get one gene from mom, we get one gene from dad. So check it out. Mom can give a dominant gene. Dad can also give a dominant gene. That's a possibility. But remember that this is another possibility. Maybe, maybe mom gives a dominant gene and maybe dad passes on his recessive gene. And remember, we know that both of them have recessive genes because they had Lisa. So that's another possibility. So if we just kind of use, you know, logic, okay, Rob could be homozygous dominant or he could be heterozygous. We don't know, right? And then a lot of times in class, I'll ask the kids, well, you know, what would Ben be? What's Ben's phenotype, right? And they think, oh, well, since Rob is heterozygous, then that must mean that, you know, maybe, okay, Ben has to be homozygous dominant, right? Right, maybe Ben, so, okay, so a lot of kids think because one kid is heterozygous, maybe the other kid has to be, okay, homozygous dominant, right? And that is not the case, okay? Remember, if you notice, what, notice what I'm doing with all these post-its, okay? I kind of made a lot of them, okay, for the parents, because as parents, and as parents, you guys, okay, we have um, on the, our, our DNA, which is, it's kind of like, it's unlimited copies, right? And so just because um, mom passes on, you know, a dominant gene and a recessive gene, that doesn't mean that the other kid has to have the leftover or vice versa. It's always, it's always like a fresh reset, okay? Got it? So in other words, in terms of Robin Ben, we can't tell for sure what he is. We know that it, he can be either homozygous dominant, because both parents can pass on a dominant gene, and we know that they can also be heterozygous, because mom can pass a, you know, a recessive a dominant gene, dad can pass a recessive gene, right? So we don't know, okay? Rob can be both of these, okay? Ben can be also both of these, and yeah, you can be both of those genotypes. We don't know. How can we, how can we know for certain in this particular example? Because we, uh, we would actually have to go and take a blood sample and figure out what his DNA and really look at his DNA, right? And so that's the only way we can know, right? But we also can do this. If we do a Punnett square, okay, we know that mom is heterozygous. We know that dad is heterozygous. Okay, and so remember our Punnett square, it, it helps us solve, okay, um, or get our probabilities of certain genotypes occurring, right? So now if we look at our Punnett square, right, Rob actually has a 25% chance of being homozygous dominant, okay? And because there's two outcomes, one, two out of four, Rob has a 50, one out of two, or one out of, or two out of four, okay, or a 50% chance of being heterozygous. So if you had to bet money on what Rob's genotype is, you would say he's probably heterozygous because there's a 50% chance of that happening, okay? And there's only a 25% chance that Rob is homozygous dominant, right? So though, that's basically all the information, okay, that we could know about Rob. Ben and Gabby. We don't know for certain what genotypes they have because, because there's multiple options, but we can use our Punnett square to figure out what are the probabilities of them having 
that genome time, okay? So hopefully that helps. We'll go over it more in class and see you next time.